Hey everybody, my name's Mike Montgomery and today I'm gonna show you how to paint a school bus on modern builds. Today's video is sponsored by Keeps. It's fair to say that this bus is dirty. After a cross-country trip from Oklahoma City to Joshua Tree, California, it was time to clean it up. I mixed up a pretty concentrated bucket of dish soap and water, and I used that to wash everything down. Now typically, dish soap is the last thing you wanna wash a vehicle with, and the reason is because it cuts grease so well that it can even cut through the wax layer on your car. After finding this out, I did a little more digging online, and on a lot of forums, people do and recommend using dish soap to wash a car before paint. That way you can get through all of that crud, grease, and the top coat of wax so that you can get a good bond with whatever primer and paint you're using. Because the bus was so big, I decided just to use a standard household mop. That way I could have a few different sponge heads and replace them throughout the washing process. And even though this whole thing took about a half of a day, I really tried my best to keep my attention to detail. With any paint project, whether it's furniture or a gigantic school bus like this, if you don't prep properly, you're gonna have bad results. The El Reno school bus has a lot of decals and stickers on it, and a lot of people like to remove those. But not too long ago, my buddy Ben Ueda did a shipping container house where he painted over all of the cargo and weight restriction stickers on the outside of the containers. And I really loved the way that looked. It's gonna save a lot of time and a lot of work also. In most of the bus painting videos I've seen, people mask off the entire window section, including all of this black trim. But on the El Reno, you can tell this black trim is super faded. So we are gonna color block this entire bus, and I'm only gonna be masking the individual window panes. It's definitely gonna take more time, but I think it's gonna make it look better, and it'll totally be worth it. This is pretty much the same masking process as what I did on the inside of the bus, except this time I had to cover up a little weather seal between the top and the bottom window panes and just make sure it didn't get any paint on it so it would still work. All right, well that's two down. I've got a lot more to go. Let's get it. One of the most common questions that I got in my recent Q&A bus video was what I was doing with the windows that either had walls or the kitchen backsplash in front of it. And as you can tell by my masking job, I'm just gonna be painting right over them. This will hide anything ugly from the exterior and just look really cool. As you can see, I masked off all of these light covers in place. And the reason is because the plastic was starting to get a little bit brittle. And I was scared that if I tried to take all of these covers off, a couple of them would break and I didn't want that. So instead I just paid close attention and masked as well as I could. A few of the vent covers and panels needed to get removed. That way I could add masking tape to the backs of those pieces and reinstall them. This will make everything look super pro and prevent paint from getting into any air intakes. Once I had my masking tape on all four sides, I could move on to my next step. I definitely wasn't expecting it to, but masking all of these windows took two full days. That's all right though, because the tape lines are really sharp and this is gonna look great. Let's move on. Overall, the existing paint job was in good shape, but there were a couple places where it looked like the bus rubbed against something and damaged that paint job. To fix any of these spots, I first grabbed my utility knife to help chip off any loose paint. Then I grabbed 150 and 220 grit sandpaper to smooth all of those spots out. I used Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer anywhere that those scratches or rust existed. For whatever reason, this product sticks really well to rusty and imperfect metal, so I wanted to make sure and use this anywhere that it could. I also applied a coat of Kills All Purpose Primer and I thinned it down with a half a cup of water for every gallon of paint. I 
I didn't want to start by thinning my paint too much, but as you can see, here on my first couple of sprays, I didn't thin it down enough, and I got a few streaks in my paint. So after that, I thinned it down a little bit more and stirred it really well and got good, clean results. Painting the roof of this bus was a ton of fun, and it was my first experience using an airless sprayer like this. It was so convenient not having to carry around a separate air compressor with me to make this whole system work. If you've never watched a tutorial on using a spray gun like this, I would definitely recommend it instead of just taking my advice. I watched a few of those videos myself before painting and I learned quite a bit. A few of the things I learned is you want to overlap each of your sprays by about 50%. That way you get even coverage. Also on a project like this where there's a lot of raised textures and edges, you want to spray from multiple directions. That way you can get into all of the nooks and crannies. And speaking of nooks, one of those places that were tough to get but I was still able to were the inside of the wheel wells. I made sure to get a thick primer coat because it was really caked up with grease and mud and I hoped that that would help the paint stay on there long term. At this point in the process, I was getting really excited. The white primer coat looked amazing and I could see how all of those logos and stickers were going to look now that they were covered up. From a distance, they completely disappear, but once you get close, you can see those Ray stickers and letters, and it's so awesome. So I'm sure you've already heard me say it plenty in the voiceover, but that primer coat looks insane. The white looks so clean. If I hadn't already seen a ton of white buses on the internet, I would probably consider keeping it. But since I have, I'm gonna be painting it baby blue. Now it's important to clean your sprayer in between coats, otherwise you'll get this primer mixed in with your paint. This stuff is cleaner made specifically for paint sprayers, but you could also just use mineral spirits and that would work fine. Also, here in Joshua Tree, around noon every day, the wind starts picking up, which makes it difficult to spray. So I'm gonna save all of the paint spraying for tomorrow. And really quickly, before moving on, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Keeps. The easiest and most affordable way for you to keep your hair. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there for men. You may have tried them before, but probably never at this price. And even better, Keeps delivers your medication to your door every three months with no in-person doctor visits. Nice. Did you know that on average, two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35, which is a lot of people. And the best way to fix that is to do something about it now while you still have hair left. Now I'm gonna level with you guys and you may have already noticed, but my hairline is starting to thin here in the corners. As a dude, this totally sucks to admit, you guys know how much I love my hair, and unfortunately, my hairline is doing the same thing my dad's did whenever he was my age, and he now has what you call a widow's peak. And that is why I'm partnering with Keeps to save the hair. If you wanna join me in the fight against male pattern baldness, make sure and follow the link down in the description. That is keeps.com slash DIY, where you can get 50% off your first order. Once again, that is 50% off at K-E-E-P-S dot com slash DIY. So skip the in-person doctor visits, the long pharmacy lines, and save your thinning hair alongside me with Keeps. Now back to the build. So today's the day. As you can tell, we have no wind at all, which is awesome. And I'm just fixing a couple of these windows where the masking tape failed overnight. Once I have these done, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna load up our sprayer with our baby blue paint that we're gonna be using to paint the outside of the bus. Oh, and my bad yesterday. Don't forget a respirator. I applied two coats of this baby blue paint and got a great finish. I did add a little bit more thinner to it, that way it could lay flatter and more even. If you're interested, I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description to all of the material and supplies that I used for this project. I think in total I used about four gallons of primer and seven and a half gallons of this bare exterior enamel in satin finish. The color that I used is called Big Chill, which is not only fitting, but the coolest color that I found. A couple of months ago, I used the website Coolers to create a color palette for the bus. It included the interior and exterior colors that I used, 
and this baby blue color was included in that palette I made. So I just took my phone with me to Home Depot and I used it to compare all of the color swatches that they had and I got the closest fit that I could find. So now that I've used the sprayer for a little bit, my verdict is that it is great. This is the Wagner 130 model. They were nice enough to send it out to me, but they're not paying me for any endorsement, at least right now. Wagner, if you want to sponsor a video, let me know. This model costs 250 bucks, and for the bus, it's been great. I'm also gonna be using it on more projects in the future, so this is gonna get a lot of wear and tear, and I'll let you know over time how it holds up. So it turns out spraying is amazing. It's so fast, whoa, it gives such good results. I don't know why I was putting off giving equipment like this a try. Now personally, I really dislike it whenever I get brush marks or roller marks in my finish, but really it's almost impossible to avoid. But using this spray unit completely gave me a flat finish just like you would out of a spray paint can. So now that you've seen me use this, you've seen me do a couple of sides, let's finish this bus out with a cool montage. I wanted to be sure and get a close-up shot of some of these decals getting painted over. That way you could see just how awesome they look. Like I mentioned earlier on in the video, even though these decals disappear from about five or eight feet, it's cool being able to retain that original character of the El Reno bus while making it look super clean. I didn't get a ton of footage capturing this second coat because you really can't see it going on very well. I did my best to move a little more slowly with this second coat knowing that if I missed anything this time around, well, there wasn't any coming back for it. But once I had this complete, the El Reno school bus is now baby blue. The best time to remove any masking tape is once your paint feels dry to the touch. Out here in Joshua Tree where it's super dry, that took about two hours. Regardless, you wanna make sure that you take this masking tape off within 24 hours for best results. Now I'm gonna do my best not to give away the complete look of this bus while I'm removing the tape, but I loved how good everything looked as it was coming off. My lines were super sharp and it was great being able to cover up those windows that had a wall on the inside of the bus. I had two windows covered up in the bathroom and three half windows on either side of the kitchen where the backsplash is. And really quickly, before the big reveal, I wanna give a big thanks to y'all for watching this video. And if you haven't, I would recommend clicking that subscribe button. That way you can stay updated every time I post new videos. But now that all of our masking tape has been removed, it's time to show this bus off. So first, I just wanna give props to the paint color Big Chill because it is awesome. 
I'm so happy that I finally took the time to learn how to use one of these airless sprayers because it looks so great. For a while, I was considering rolling all of the paint on. I had seen a couple of YouTube videos where other people had done this and it didn't look terrible, but it doesn't look anywhere as close to as nice as what spraying paint looks like. All right, Modern Builds family, we just got done building this school bus tiny house. We did five episodes on the inside, and we just painted the exterior. And now it's time to reveal the next big Modern Builds project. Driver, move that bus! I just bought a house. I bought it to renovate it. I'm gonna update it. Stay tuned, Modern Build, subscribe.